So, what we've got happening here is that every hour here in the S3 bucket, a new file gets created or overwrites the file that is here with new data. And we want that to be detected by a lambda function. And then we want that lambda function to trigger the glue job that we just created. And then that will pull the data up and it will put it into Redshift here. So that's the plan. And as you can see in here, we have this file, the CSV, appearing here at about 22 minutes every hour. 22 minutes past every hour. So what happens is here, to create the function, the lambda function, we need a few things. First, um, we need to create a role. So that's what we're going to do here for, especially for the lambda function here. I'm going to make a lambda, new lambda role here. And then also we need to use this little bit of code here, Python code that is going to be at the bottom of the video that you can copy and in here inside the code we have to have the name of the the um, glue job that we're going to call and that's all really and so let's see what happens if we set it up and see if it works so we're gonna first create a role in IAM, we went in IAM, let's just go back to IAM and then roles I see all these roles here, we're gonna create a HON, let's see, wait, what do we have? we have a glue role, we have a HON redshift role and then now we're gonna create a HON lambda role lambda Lambda, lambda. So that one there. That's highlighted. So click next. And the first, the thing here for the role is, which policies do we want to attach it to? So I've got three here. A list of three. So you want it to be able to get to your S S three bucket. So put in S three full access. That's the first one. And then you want it to be able to execute lambda. So lam -da. you want it to AWS AWS Lambda execute. This one here. This one AWS uh, Lambda execute. Uh, hmm. Let's scroll down here. Oh, that's the one here. AWS Lambda execute. There's so many Lambda ones, okay. And then the last one is. For it to be able to get to the glue, so we call a glue here, and we want AWS Glue Console full access. So that's the one there, and then that's it. So those three. Next, we don't need any tags here, and then the name of the role. I'm going to call it. Uh, uh, instead of glue, lambda L A M B D A. And it has these three things. Just double check. S three full access lambda execute glue console full access. That's correct. So now we will create.
create a role and there it is here yeah, this one so that's that part done and now we just have to go into um lambda so let's go back and go to the very beginning here let's go to lambda see we don't have the one that we want so we want to create one create a new one author from scratch function name on uh, lambda table one and this is going to use Python three seven Python three seven and let's see the role. What is the role that we want? Use an existing role here. So let's find the role that I just created on lambda role and then view advanced settings coding signal anything like this no so create the function and now when we create the function here what happens is we get this here so you go into this double click this and you'll get to the code bit but we want to write, overwrite this code with this code here that we have which basically is just um, calling in these things here json and boto3 and then it's just calling glue using the boto3 client and then it's um, just running the job starting the job and the name of the job so the name of the job has to be the same as that job that we had in where was it here let's see duplicate this tab and the name of this job was i'm sure it's that but i'm just going to make double sure by going to aws glue that's my job <laughs> and then that's where my jobs are go into here ah so actually no it's the name of the job is hon glue job so i just want to get this here and replace it with this here so just make sure that that is the name of the job otherwise it won't find it then we can just save that save that back so copy this code and then go into lambda where that code was and paste that in so that's that part there and um I'm sure there's some part where you have to sort of save it okay so we're just gonna do let me add the trigger first and then after you have to deploy it that's the bit yeah so let me add the trigger so the trigger is to look for um, AWS as well okay is aws s3 s3 so it's uh, in here s3 mm. oh there were some things to do with the that's the bucket okay And 
then mm, yeah there's a prefix and then there's a suffix so yeah this all objects create event what other ones are there Yeah, that's all objects create event. It's the one that we want. And then you have some prefixes. So this is the stuff that comes after um, in here, after on bucket two, after the name of your bucket. So after the name of your bucket, you have things like table one, and then that's a folder. Then inside that you have another folder called incremental load so that's what we need to put in here so we need to put in table one that's our first uh, folder inside the bucket and then increment to load increase mental load and then forward slash and then the suffix is the file so inside s3 the file is table 1 csv table 1 dot csv so that is yeah do those things like this function right so I acknowledge that some both input so you have to click this thing here and then you can put add then that's it that's done the trigger in here and then over here Actually, back in the code here, you want to deploy. Deploy changes. Changes deployed. Yeah. And then that was the um, trigger in here. So that's it, actually. That's it. It's all set. And then what happens is so we can test this actually this is how we can test it so let us first come in here and see what we have here inside the um, redshift here we still have 10 rows so we're just going to drop let's drop the last five rows so delete from this table here where id is greater or equal to greater or equal to six so that when we run that that drops that and then let's see what's left okay so this is your first historic load so after that we want to just sort of just do something to trigger the the lambda function and then the trigger for that is when something overwrites or something lands in here so what we can do is we can just download this file we can delete it then we can just upload it so if we download this action download okay so this is the file in here it looks like this 6 to 10 our incremental load so then let me just delete this file 
ns3 permanently delete so it's gone now and now I'm going to just do an upload upload add files from my download area and then upload so now what that has done is that has dropped this file in here so what that should have done is just triggered this lambda function here and then that would have triggered the glue a job here this one and then so we can see the history actually in the glue job so from here I got rid of this a little bit because it's just at the bottom of the screen so it says running here and we can refresh it just pull this up a bit see it's still rough refreshing succeeded it's wonderful so now if we go into dbeaver look at our redshift and now if we have a look what's in here we have our incremental load so that's it actually and that's the end of this little pipeline that we have made so in summary what have we done we have created some data in here and then first we did an initial manual load of the data from our MySQL database and using AWS data pipeline to go to um, S3 and then we just manually uploaded it here by doing a copy command against Redshift and pulling it through from here to here and then that was just our initial historic load then after that we created another one of these that was especially for the incremental load and then from that we pulled incremental data which was the second portion of the data that we wanted and that dropped it in here and then we from here we had to go backwards a little bit create this stuff backwards so we what we did was we had to create the database here we had to have a staging area as well that's where we drop it and then all this stuff happens with the glue um, the job it drops it into the staging area and then gets what it needs for the staging area to update into the data warehouse layer and that is all triggered by this lambda function here serverless lambda function so uh, it's set to sort of just detect when there's there is a change on the file that lands here and that file this job has been programmed to run every hour so every hour you will get some updates coming in here and then being dropped in here being detected by your lambda function then that lambda function kicks off your aws glue job then that aws glue job pulls amazon s3 data which is going to be the stuff that's just been dropped there and it pushes it up to your redshift so that's your data pipeline and that's the end of this series so yeah thank you very much for watching and i hope you've enjoyed it